good morning friends today we are going to continue our topic synchronous motors before that i want to introduce myself my name is dr c h yadaya senior lecturer in electrical and electronics engineering at god polytechnic usnabad today topic is fifth semester ac motors first chapter in last class we have seen few introduction of few topics regarding to introduction of synchronous machine in fourth semester level you are very familiar about synchronous machine in that you have learnt synchronous generator what is a synchronous generator i think you have the some idea what is a synchronous generators and these generators are generally used in power plants whether it may be thermal power plant hydro power plants and nuclear power plants synchronous machine or alternator or generators which is produce the a large amount of the electrical power at low voltage level at generating stations this energy is transmitted to a long distance number of kilometers by using transmission lines with step up voltage once again nearby city thickly populated area they will provide the receiving substations once again what are the high voltages step down to required voltage based on requirement of consumers whether required consumer may be the lt consumers ht consumers and ehd consumers so these are the our power system arrangements so here the synchronous generator is a synchronous machine in power generation systems turbine is coupled to our synchronous generator rotor when our the primary input as a mechanical energy through turbines it will generate ac electrical energy then we can say this is a synchronous generator or we can say this is a alternator if whether if you are given the same electrical energy to the machine then it is possible to generate the mechanical energy yes why not similar to our previous well known topic is a dc machine what we have seen in dc machine the dc machine is nothing but it is a dc motor as well as a dc generator that performs based on input supply input energy whether you are going to give the electrical energy or mechanical energy if electrical energy is given to a dc machine then it will gives out as a mechanical energy then it works as a dc motor whether shunt motor series motor or compound motor same machine if the mechanical input is given as a input supply then it will generate the electrical energy then it is a dc generator shunt generator cd generator and compound generators these are all things are you are very familiar similar to this one here synchronous generator also the synchronous machine when out the based on input 
it will give the output. So, whether the synchronous machine can be used as a motor as well as generators. So, now synchronous gen generator already we have seen in last semester. Now, we are going to learn the synchronous motor. What is the significance of synchronous motor? Whereas, in case of the DC motor, so only electrical DC supply is enough. Whereas, in case of three phase induction motors, three phase AC supply is enough. But in case of synchronous motor, we require the AC supply and DC supply. Dual supply is required to run synchronous motor. So, that is the beauty of synchronous motor. Then what is its importance? Where we are going to use these applications of synchronous motor? So, we know that the synchronous motor is runs at a constant speed irrespective of load on motor. Up to some extent, if you are going to, if you are go on increasing load by load by load by load, then the motor will not reduce its speed. For example, if you are taking the 4 pole machine, it is a synchronous speed is a 14, that is a 1500 rpm. Initially, there is no load, even then it will run at speed of 1500 rpm. Now, you are connected the motor to the some floor mill, then speed may not be changes. It runs at constant speed 1500 rpm only. Now, you load another machine or application and you'll, then you can observe the speed is maintained constant 1500 rpm only. Further load increases, speed is constant. Further load increases, speed increases. So, you have the good example. Suppose I have the one two wheeler. When I am single person, so our two wheeler will run smoothly, perfectly. Once another person is added to me, then automatically weight of the two persons increases load on two wheeler increases then speed may be changes comparing to the single person. Now further another person is added. Now three persons average the weight is a 150 kg. Then you can observe the load on two wheelers comparing to the load of single person on two wheelers. Then the speed of the bike may not be same in first case and third case. In that case, if the load increases, automatically speed decreases, similar to all motors, in DC motors and induction motors. But whereas in synchronous motor, if load increases further, the speed maintains constant, up to some limited. After that, so automatically if it runs at a constant speed or it comes to zero speed as already learned in previous class. Now, so this is a high precision machine, the constant speed. So, this can be used for the a very important applications like in case of paper mills, in steel mills. And wherever we require the constant speed, then we can advisable this synchronous motor. And it has the very high good efficiency. So, these are the some uh, significant uh, merits of synchronous motor. Now, let us see today class what we have we are going to learn. So, on completion of this period, you would be able to learn about the construction details of synchronous motor, the construction of stator, 
construction and types of rotors physical how what are the different parts consist of a synchronous motor operation we will learn later but before the physical what are the similar to the dc machine what is the dc machine consists it has the yoke and poles pole shoes this is a stator now come to the rotor the rotor having the rotor and the armature nothing but it has the armature winding armature and stompings and shaft and bearings similar here also it consists of stator as well as rotor we will see in details last class we have what we have seen so in previous period we have discussed about in introduction of introduction of synchronous machines and synchronous motor salient points now you can see here what is this one yes it is a, a electric machine it can operated it can be used as a motor as well as generator as per our requirement now here synchronous motor circuit you can at a glance as a electrical student so what are the physical items physical elements in a machine is converted to our electrical equivalent circuits you can see here this is the two parts here this is a one part this is a another part the first part is nothing but stator and second part nothing but is a rotor now stator is a three phase winding here for example this is the r phase y phase and b phase winding distributed inside of the stator in a slots now in case of rotor and plus minus and concentrated winding on a rotor here we are going to give the three phase ac supply here we are going to the dc supply now three phase ac supply what is the purpose plus minus dc supply what is the purpose to the rotor let us see now you can see here this is a stator and this is a rotor equivalents now the ac supply is given to the stator what is happened now whenever the ac supply is given to the three phase distributed winding copper winding and it produces a, a rotating magnetic field uh, rotating at a synchronous speed the field assumed is the rotating in a air gap between the stator and the rotor now in this case now when this is known as rotating magnetic field now when dc supply is given to the rotor through slip rings then what is happening so whenever the current passing through the conductor it is a normal obviously it generates a magnetic field even you are giving the dc supply and it is also rotor also produced a magnetic field so we know that magnetic field consists of north pole and south pole now what is happening here so once ac supply is given here and here is a north pole and south pole produced here the north pole and south pole is also produced due to the plus and minus is a unidirectional supply the poles are north pole and south pole is a stationary whereas uh, here due to the ac supply so north pole and south pole at the one for example we taking the one cycle in positive wave so north pole is the upper side and the south pole is the lower side next after off cycle this is changes now it is going to the the here is south pole it will go to the north pole next of further one positive cycle 
once again it becomes to the it comes to this one and this comes to this one that means in positive cycle and here is the north pole and here is the south pole that means here north pole and south pole changes for every half cycle but whereas the here the north pole and south pole is a constant due to this one there is a one a significant operation takes place that we will learn later this is basic idea so operation of synchronous motor we will learn later with the help of diagrams so the synchronous motor even ac supply is given and dc supply is given even both supplies are given to the same machine but it is not a self starting motor there is no mechanical output even ac supply is given and dc supply is given but there is no mechanical output so that is the one problem so we can say the synchronous motor is not a self starting motor similar to the single phase induction motors for that purpose what to do we require the some starting methods we will learn later so the basic idea of synchronous motor the synchronous motor consists of the stator and is consists of the rotor the stationary part is a stator and rotating part is a rotor and stator is a consist of the a three phase distributed winding for the production of sinusoidal wave and the emf purpose sinusoidal uniformly sinusoidal emf is flowing through the in air gap and whereas the rotor is a concentrated winding not distributed winding and so these are the some salient points to the of the synchronous motor okay let us see so what are the how the synchronous motor stator consist what are the significances what are the salient points and what are the synchronous motor rotor and how many types and what is the difference between the two rotors let us see one by one in this class okay now you can see here now now you can see here in details now this is the magnetic field now construction details of synchronous motor as we know that this is a stator and it is a rotor rotor is fed dc supply and stator stationary part fed with the three phase ac supply now the three phase synchronous generator or machine or motor is essentially composed of one is the stator which is a stationary part and which is the rotates that is a rotor now you can see the cross section of a cross sectional of a large turbo machine if inside what is happening here you can see the all parts so what is happening so this is a total rotor it has a rotor it has a stator winding so you can see the this is a stator and where is the rotor are placed and here is the slip rings and this shaft so different parts rotor winding stator winding connections bearings shaft so every part similar to the all similar to the dc machine dc motor and uh, induction motors but here uh, so dual supply is required now let us see this one now you can see the another uh, synchronous generator generally used in hydro power stations now you can see what is this one and this is a rotor this is a stator and at the same time you can observe the here are the some operators they are going to the establish the install the this turbo generators now sorry that is a hydro generators and the size of the stator and rotor you can compare with a one person here the how big size of the our synchronous machines 
now this is the stator and this is the rotor now let us see stator regarding the stator part so as we know that just like any other motor the synchronous motor also has a stator as well as the rotor stator has a, a stator frame so it is outer part of the machine and made up of a cast iron material its main work is to protect the enter inner part of the machine just like in dc machine yoke where in case of a dc machine yoke is a two purpose one it can carry the magnetic field and it protect the mechanical damage but in this case it cannot carry the magnetic field only it protect the enter inner parts of the machine support the stator mag coils and in dc machine the outer frame serves to carry the magnetic flux and holding the stator field poles in an alternator the stator frame is meant for only holding the stator stampings and the stator copper wires you can see one example of uh, synchronous motor stator so you can here similarly you can similar to the, this is a, a yoke so this is a yoke so outer body and this is a stator frame also made up the laminations and it has a slots these slots may be different types the open slots semi enclosed semi enclosed slots and closed slots and so so this is the frame this is the eye bolt everything is similar to the normal machines now you can see this is a stator core laminations as we know that what is the purpose of the laminations so the stator frame a core so we can say so it is a, a thin silicon laminations it is insulated by a, a surface coating to minimize the eddy current losses and stresses losses overall core losses its main purpose is to provide a path of low reluctance for the magnetic magnetic lines of forces and accommodate the stator winding so i think you have already drawn in drawing subject three phase winding whether lap winding or wave winding sometimes we can use a mush mush winding also so what is the back pitch what is the front pitch so here based on the number of slots each phase or phase y phase b phase distributed at 120 degrees electrical apart to produce a sinusoidal magnetic field a uniform magnetic field that thing already you know now here stator slots and stator copper conductors so here copper conductors are the generally the enameled copper is used as a winding material here the three phase winding is distributed over a several slots to produce a sinusoidal emf what is the front pitch what is the back pitch based on already calculations we known so this is a uh, about of the synchronous motor stator now terminal box for ac input supply and this i bolt to lift the total machines now synchronous motor stator here you can see the it is made up of the generally the cast iron material and so here you can observe one thing here also is outer here some pins are provided for cooling purpose and inside we are going to provide the frame laminated core silicon 
laminations. We know that the laminations are 0.35 mm to 0.5 mm silicon laminations. Already you know that latest MR plus core also used in transformers. And in this case, we are using the silicon laminations. Now, next we are going to inside, we are going to use a, the stator core lamination and the seal. What is the purpose? To reduce the iron losses, whether it may be both hysteresis losses and anti current losses. So, you can observe the slots also. So, in that, we are going to provide the winding copper and I will do winding. Now, is that winding is also provided. This is the total full electrical equivalent stator part. Now, you can see here the synchronous motor used in practical way. So, stator slots you can see in that red color you can observe there is a windings and the stator frame also you can see it. The size of the stator also you can see this type of the uh, machines are used in genetic stations. Now what are the salient points already we have seen once again we will uh, revise what are the regarding to the stator points. The stator is made up of soft iron or si silicon steel laminations. The silicon steel is used to reduce the hysteresis losses. Core is laminated to reduce eddy current losses. Three phase windings owned in stator slots with a 120 degrees electrical apart. And the laminations are stamped out in complete rings or in a segments. The laminations are insulated from each other with varnish. The laminations have spaces between them for allowing the cooling air to pass through it. So, it is that there is a some gap is provided to allow the air to whatever the heat energy generated due to the eddy current is taken out. The slots for housing the armature conductors lies along the inner periphery of the Core already we have seen the person who is the standing observing the, the slots. Now you can see here. So, what is this one? One is a stator. This is a one of the stator. Inside we are going to use the our stator winding R phase, Y phase, B phase. Now, if you are going to the at a glance, the enlarge this one, you are going to see another figure. Now, you can see here how the, the copper windings owned in a stator frame in slots. Now, if you are seeing the another the end rings of the stator winding, so ends how you are going to connect it with the insulating tape and insulating papers. And further, if you are going to the close, then you can observe the how this the connection is taken for a coil. So, this is the one example of practical examples of stator of a synchronous motor. Now, here also you can see, so this is a one example. So, this is a inner side and inner side there is a slots, here you can see the slots, slot to slot there is a gap and in that one they are inserting the coils, you can see the all are the coils and the coils are interconnected now previously we have seen and this is a frame and inside core and inside winding so metal frame and a laminated iron core with slots insulated copper bars are placed in slots to form the three phase winding now you can observe one of the uh, hydro power station stator the stator of a large salient pole hydro generators. Now, you can see the inside here. So, how the windings are takes place. These are the windings and spaces between the winding to winding. 
now i think you have the some idea what is the stator and how the stator is formed now coming to the second part that is the rotor stator we have seen stator it has a stator yoke stator frame stator core and stator oh, copper winding now coming to the rotor side so rotor is the rotating member of the rotating machine rotor is moving a part of machine the salient pole type rotor a consists of poles projecting out of from the rotor surfaces now we can see the rotor further classified into two types synchronous motor has a two types of rotors one is a salient pole rotor that is the projected type salient means projected type and another is the non salient pole that is a cylindrical type smooth so these are the two types of the rotors generally used in our synchronous machines now we can see this is a salient pole rotor so you can observe the poles are projected outside this is a one pole this is another pole this is another pole you can see the poles projected outside and the diameter of the this is also more and length axial length is less that is a salient pole rotors whereas in case of the non salient pole you can see this is a one example the axial length is very very large and diameter is a very very less as compared to the previous one whereas a salient pole rotor has a more number of poles but whereas a non salient pole cylindrical it has a two or four poles very less number of poles so salient pole rotor is used for when we know that what is the formula ns n is equal 120 f by p now the p and n is a inversely proportional here the salient pole rotor number of poles are more than automatically speed will reduce so in salient pole rotor the number of more number of poles presents whereas in non salient pole rotor the poles are very very less then speed will more so salient pole rotors are generally used in hydro power stations and non salient poles are generally used in uh, steam turbines so where the speed is more so we will see that is also now coming to the this is a one example of the rotor you can see the how many number of poles the size of this also and you can see this is the cylindrical rotor previous is the salient pole this is the non salient pole rotors these are two rotors now we'll see one by one how the salient pole rotor how the cylindrical pole rotor consist now salient pole rotor it consist of the pole and pole shoes in pole shoes there is a damper winding provided this damper winding is not but either copper strips inserted and both ends is the uh, we can say the soldered or short circuited so what is the purpose of damper winding the damper winding is used as a starting uh, of the synchronous motor at the same time it can also reduce the, the hunting problem what is the hunting we will see later next the laminated core similar to reduce the losses and at the same time the copper enameled winding this is the winding is the concentrated winding and it is the taken out through the two slip rings one is a plus and as a minus so the salient pole type rotor consists of poles projecting out from the rotor surface it is also made up of a steel laminations to reduce the eddy current losses generally it is used for low and medium speed operations generally hydro power stations where less than 500 rpm 
they contains damper windings for starting purpose now you can see some salient points also so this is a one example of the rotor salient port rotor so what how what is the well so this is the slip rings and this is a one pole this is another pole this is another pole this are this is a four pole machine and this is a winding you can see the red color winding so rotor now it is a shaft is connected to the external line. now it's not only this one for the more number of poles you can see another one also so this is a more number of poles so based on the number of poles we can manufacture it so this is similar to the, the armature of dc motor now we can see it so we have seen the core and core frame and core winding similarly the rotor rotor core rotor winding and in addition to slip rings now combined this and this then we can get the the motor it is a stator and this is a rotor now you can see here this is a another example of the salient pole generator so this is a one pole you can see this is a one another pole this is the one another pole this is another pole this is another pole this is a winding so you can observe this is also laminated one now you can what are the salient points salient points it has a large number of projecting poles outside you can see the now outside projecting outside and their cores are bolted to heavy magnetic wheels of cast iron or steel such machines have a large diameter and short axle length you can observe this the diameter is more uh, but is a uh, axle length is a uh, very very less the poles and pole shoes or laminate to minimize the eddy current losses it is used for low and medium speed machines so already we have seen less than 500 rpm generally for the hydro power stations higher head power plants lower head power plants and minimum head power plants also we can lower head power plants also we can use this type of the synchronous machine now another type of the rotor is a smooth cylindrical rotor physical point of view it is now the axial length is more shaft length is more and diameter is less compared to the previous one but now so a cylindrical rotor is made up of a solid forging of high grade nickel chromium molybdenum steel material you can see Uh, that is a steel material with a alloys another chemicals nickel chromium molybdenum steel generally used for manufacturing of this type of the rotor the poles are created by current flowing through the winding so it has a slots in that we are inserting the winding and rotor winding also the concentrated winding and it is given to the slip rings two slip rings through which we are external dc supply is given to the rotor and the poles are created by current passing through the copper enamel winding which is placed inside the rotor the high speed applications generally preferred for the cylindrical rotor machines it has a, a less number of poles previously also so n is directly proportional to the n indirectly proportional to the p n indirectly proportional to 1 by p now what is happening if the number of poles are reduces speed will increases so it can be used in steam turbines the high speed applications it is a preferred it has a less number of poles and it is also produce a very very less noise during its operation 
and window losses the cylindrical one so windage losses also very very less whereas the, the air gap in the projected rotor is non uniform whereas in this case the air gap between the stator and rotor is a uniform it has a uniform air gap and the dc supply is given to rotor winding via slip rings now the stator consists of the smooth solid forged steel cylindrical which has a number of slots in this the rotor poles are not salient and do not project out and it is used for steam turbine driven generators where it runs nearly 3000 rpm such rotors are designed for two pole turbo generators for the two poles so what what is the formula two poles ns is equal to 120f by p so 120 into f is a frequency then what is happening then automatically then 120 into 50 by so p is the two poles we are going to get the nearly 3000 rpm and the rotor field winding is excited by a separate a dc supply through slip rings from outside later we are going to use a, a brushless dc machines also later we are using in generators brushless there is no external dc supply to the machine so whatever the dc supply is required inside there is going to produce by using the some uh, small uh, dc shunt generator is uh, provided on the same shaft in case of the generators but in case of the motors we require a dc supply from outside so the dc supply is we are going to control whether the current dc current is more or less or normal based on dc current into rotor we are going to excite the supply the over excited under excited a normal excited so due, during this three process we are going to get the some benefits what are the benefits we will learn later now you can see the practical another the smooth cylindrical rotor rotor carries a special winding called the damper windings at the pole shows the damper winding consists of a short circuited copper bars embedded in the pole shows the damper windings helps to develop a starting torque and prevent hunting now you can see this the comparison between the uh, projected and non projected this is a projected one and this is a non cylindrical one the cylindrical one the cylindrical one smooth we can say this is the projected one salient one this is a non salient in non salient you can see here what is a turbo driven rotor so it is a generally used is a rpm high speed purpose we are going to use so less number of poles whereas a in salient pole rotor it has a more number of poles it can be used less rpm applications if you are observing the direction is a cross sectional direction so we are going to this one we are going to this one okay so the comparison between the salient and non salient rotors in salient here you can see the salient one what will happen this the diameter is more axle length is less whereas axle length is high and diameter is less it has a less number of poles it has a high number of poles it can be used for the higher uh, lower speed applications it can be used for the higher speed applications so if you know the idea then automatically we can see that thing now what happened now now we can see the overall synchronous motor the synchronous motor rotor and stator we have seen rotor also be classified and now stator and rotor is inserted then automatically it will works the rotor is rotating this is coupled to our different applications this is the one thing you have to remember and now 
let us summarize what we have learned in this class. We have discussed in this class about the stator and its construction features and types of rotors and their construction features and comparison between the stator and rotors. Now I think you have the some idea. Now quiz and later we will learn. Okay. Thank you for this one.